Uh, let's all welcome, and I'm going to try my best, Seat Lalik. Um, Sit Lalik, okay, great. Uh, Sit Lalik is here to speak with you. She's from Chicago. She uh, moved to the Bay Area when she went to college. She went to Santa Clara University and did their five-year uh, Bachelor of Science, Master of Science program in bioengineering with an emphasis on medical devices. And she currently works as a senior development engineer at Meraki Medical. Welcome, and we're so excited to have you here. Um, let me see. Uh, let me see if I can find you. Oh, there you are. Okay, so we'll put you on speaker view, and then hopefully everyone will see you. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, like, like pretty said, I'm originally from Chicago. I was born and raised in Chicago. I moved out here to the Bay Area for school. Um, I went to Santa Clara. Did my master's in uh, undergrad in bioengineering. Um, and yeah, after graduation, I took a little bit of time off. Um, and then I started working here at Meraki Medical and I've been here for the last a little over three years now. Um, so in that time, I've worked on a variety of different projects um, from uh, like bioelectronics, so like some implantable kind of pacemaker type devices and then other like interventional medicine. So a lot of like catheter based stuff. So um, the here at Meraki Medical, it's um, contract manufacturing. So what that means is that we, you know, we'll partner with different uh, like with, with a lot of people, but, you know, it might be a really small company who, you know, they're, they're just starting out. They don't really have a facility to, um, you know, develop their design. So they partner with us, they'll use our resources. You know, we kind of serve as their engineers. Um, we might be partnering with, you know, uh, doctors who, you know, they have this idea, they, they maybe aren't super familiar with product development. So, you know, they partner with us. That's actually uh, one of my projects. I'm working with um, a, doc a doctor out of Stanford. Um, and then, you know, sometimes we'll partner with really big uh, companies too, who, you know, maybe they want to start a new design. They, you know, for, for some reason, you know, we have some capability that, that, they, that they would like to take advantage of us. So they, you know, they partner with us. Um, but basically, you know, the short of it is that, um, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity to work on a lot of different types of products. Um, and I've worked anywhere from super early kind of, you know, brainstorming um, a device like, you know, they might have an idea, we kind of wanted to do this, we don't really know where to start. So I've been able to work from kind of those very early stages all the way through um, to, you know, getting a, a product ready to, to launch to market, you know, getting it ready for uh, production. Um, so that's, you know, kind of in a nutshell, you know, going through the entire kind of from, you know, start to finish of, of medical device development. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's a uh, pretty a couple of questions that um, so, well, I'll, I'll prompt you with a few questions, but I also want to let the class do that as well, if they have any, but could you give us some examples of some of these products that you've worked on so they have an idea of like what you're talking about? Sure, yeah, so um, I, I can't talk about some, there's a couple I can't talk about. Um, for one that I can, um, it's, it's an implantable device um, that's to help short bowel syndrome. Um, what this is, is uh, sometimes um, when babies are born, they have a really short intestine. Um, and this is, you know, if it's less than a third of the length that should be. So when your intestine is that short, your body doesn't have enough, you know, your body isn't able to um, absorb all the nutrients. And for young babies, a lot of the times this leads to just a cascade of issues. And for these babies who are born with a short bowel, a lot of the times they don't make it past, you know, there's a high mortality rate between three and five years of age. Um, the treatment is really expensive. Um, and so it, it's, you know, it's a really hard um, condition, you know, that, that these babies are going through, that their families are put through. So one of the devices that I'm working on, it's, it's, it's an implant that gets inserted into their small intestine. And over the course of one to two weeks, it actually, um, it applies a force that um, lengthens that intestine. And then the, the device, it can either be removed surgically or it can pass naturally. And that's you know a procedure that could be done multiple times to help increase the length of the intestine. Um, you know, for some of these babies where you know their intestine is, is really short, um, a couple centimeters of length already, you know, contributes um, like significantly to the amount of nutrition they're able to. Um, to uptake. 
So, you know, this is um, one of the examples that's actually probably one of my, my favorite projects, but it's, yeah, it's really cool. It's, you know, I've been working on the implant and the delivery system for that, um, you know, but there's, there's, there's just like a whole variety of, of different projects, but that's, you know, that's one that's, I think is super cool. Yeah, I want to echo what's been said in the chat. Wow. Yeah. Um, that, that's amazing. And could you talk about like um, your participation on like the medical side of things? Do you need to know the body? Did you take anatomy? Did you, you know, like, was that part of, do you get in there and do the surgery as an engineer? Like, tell us about that. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, you know, in undergrad, I, I you know, I definitely took like anatomy and, and all those, all those fun classes. Um, to be fully honest, you know, a couple of years out of college, like I don't remember all the details. I've definitely had, you know, to refresh my memory working on this project, but, you know, for, for this specific project, I'm, you know, I'm actually communicating quite closely with like the doctor and the surgeons and kind of like their medical team. A couple, I guess, months ago at this point, um, I was actually able to like see them perform um, one of their like uh, animal case studies. So this was, you know, a device that like, we built both the implant and the delivery device and, you know, you go get them sterilized and it's this whole process, but, you know, I was able to like physically attend the surgery. Like they had, it was, it was on, on a pig. Um, so, you know, I'm there, I like, you know, gowned up, I'm in the surgery room and I'm able to like watch this whole surgery. Like, you know, they, they make the incision. <laughs> you can see them like pull out the entire intestine <laughs> looking for the correct place to and then they just, you know, they put it, they do the whole thing and then just, they just tuck everything back in. Um, so like, that's a really cool experience, um, like to, to actually like see that. And then, you know, we get the follow-up, like, you know, this was successful, it passed after this amount of time and, you know, they can take um, like images through like x-rays, radiography, and they can actually see like, you know, this was, they, they marked off, this was the original um, length of the intestine. And, you know, after everything, you know, they have those same markers and you can see that the length of intestine has, has grown. Um, so that was, you know, that's, that's been a really cool process. I've been working on this project for about two years now, and this is one that we started from the very, very beginning. And so, you know, to, to be able to see it, like actually, like being used in an operation is really cool. And the goal for this one is to eventually get to um, first in man. So, you know, get this whole development process, do all our testing to make sure that we have a safe device and that we feel comfortable using this like in, in a person. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool stuff. That is really cool. Um, was there a question from the class? I thought I heard somebody. No. Okay. Um, could you like the this class engineering five um, is introduction to engineering so many of the students here have an idea of what field they want to go into but they um, may be swayed by what they learn in the class as well to explore something else okay. um, what advice would you give uh, any of these students who want to pursue uh, working in the field that you do yeah oh, good question um so for one of the cool things about medical devices is that you don't necessarily have to have a bioengineering degree to work in this field. A lot of my coworkers have a background in mechanical engineering, um, electrical engineering. Those are those are pretty common ones too. Um, you know, so if, like if medical devices is something that's interesting to you, you can work on medical devices coming from you know a different um, you know from from different like approaches almost. Um, and ultimately, a lot of the stuff that you need, you're frankly, you're going to learn on the job. Um, you know, it's definitely important, like in school, you, you get a lot of like kind of the foundations. Um, and I'm sure the students have heard this before, like when you move into the workplace, like it's, it's a different way of learning and you'll learn a lot of what you need on the spot, like on the job. Um, that being said, I think one thing's really important is, you know, for for everybody, you know, students, whoever, when you're starting a job, like you, you really have to put in the effort to um, like find resources at work or, you know, kind of take the initiative to kind of like learn. Um, yeah, so it's long story short, you can, you can work on medical devices. You like, there isn't one clear path. There is, you can get to it from, from many different routes. I Which is great. Fun. Yeah, the, we're, we're talking yep. about the broader field of mechanical engineering, mm -hmm. biomedical and biomechanical fall under that bio as mm -hmm. well. So that's great. So I, I might be, you know, um, 
Oh, here's a question from a student. So what types of, and this was kind of where I was going. Um, okay. What type, so I'll ask theirs and I'll also throw mine in. What types of materials are used for biomedical devices? So plastic, mm -hmm. non-toxic, metals, or how do you coat certain materials so that no toxins, bacteria are developed after the surgeries? And then my question was going to be what you see with the emerging materials, like um, the ability to 3D print um, biomaterials, as well yeah. as like nanotechnology. Uh, how, do, how do you see those in the future of this field? That was yeah. my question. Sure. So, so I'll, I'll start with the first question in terms of what materials do you use? So you use a lot of different materials and medical devices. You definitely use plastics. You definitely use metals. Um, there's like specific metals that you, you know, that are implant safe. There's some that you try to avoid. It's long story short, use a lot of different materials. Um, when you're actually building a device, what you want to look at is, you know, how am I using this? If it's going to be, you know, if it's patient contacting, if it's going to be an implant, if it is an implant, how long is it going to be in the body? Where is it going to be in the body? And based on these different categories, there's different levels of testing that your device has to go through to be, you know, um, that has to go through and successfully pass to be considered safe. So, you know, for for the implant that I was working on, it's, you know, it's going to be in the intestine. It's going to be, you know, touching mucous membrane, the intestine. And it's, you know, we're testing it for, um, it's, it's considered a, a permanent implant because it's over 30 days of an implant that we're testing for. Um, but, you know, there's, there's like a set of testing. So um, the implant that I'm working on, it's got metal and it's got plastic. So there's, there's a lot of varieties of materials that you're using in, in medical devices. Um, and then pre for your question for, sorry, can you repeat it? Um, well, I was asking if you had, um, if you could advise us how materials of the future mm -hmm. and nanotechnology are making their way into this field. Yeah, so in terms of, so I, I frankly don't have too much experience with like 3D printing um, like tissue. I, you know, it's definitely something I learned about in school. I, I haven't had, you know, the chance to work on that specifically, but in terms of kind of like nanomaterials and the idea of moving to a really small scale is definitely something that's, you know, happening in the medical device, like in the medical device uh, world. One of the devices that I'm working on, it's, you know, I'm working on it under, I'm working on it under a microscope. It's, it's basically a pressure sensor and it's, you know, it's got a diameter of like four millimeters. And so when, right, so when you're working on it, like, um, you know, you're, you're processing it, these parts are really tiny, you're like doing this different processes and you have to be really careful because like if you lose this pin that's like 40 thou of an inch long, like it's lost, you're not going to find it again. Um, but even then, like the customer that I'm working on with on this, they want to make that same device at like a third of the size. So, you know, it's not quite nanoscale, but, you know, medical devices, like we're definitely moving in a direction where we want to get things as, as little as possible. Um, and then, you know, again, with like human anatomy, like there are, you know, veins and arteries that are, you know, if you're putting a catheter or you're, you're putting a stent, you know, there's, there's parts of the body that are really small and we have to be able to um, successfully develop uh, devices that can be inserted to that specific location through, you know, really small um, arteries, well, you know, whatever it is. So, yeah, I mean, medical devices, small, small, <laughs> small devices are, are definitely, uh, you know, a way that, um, that, that the medical device world is, is moving towards. That is so cool. Um, okay. So there's another question in the chat. What's the smallest device you've worked with? Is the pressure sensor something you would normally work with or is it more rare? Um, so I think this pressure sensor is the smallest one I've, I've worked with. Is it something I'd work? So with, um, this is kind of the, uh, this is kind of the the only pressure sensor that I've, I've worked on. And part of that has been, um, you know, just the nature of, of the company where I work on. We're really working on like a variety of different uh, medical devices. There are other teams here at the company who are doing kind of similar like pressure sensor devices. I don't know the specifics of that, um, but I mean, yeah, that's, um, you know, there are more than, um, there are a variety of like small pressure sensors that, you know, people are trying to develop and like get them really small and stuff. And um, I, you know, there's, there's some like pretty cool applications where, you know, they're trying to measure like the pressure in like your eyeball and 
you know, stuff like that, which, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, was there someone else who had a question? Oh, oh okay. Is CRISPR technology the next big step oh, in med medicine? Yeah. Ooh, a little bit out of my, my wheelhouse there. <laughs> so yeah, I, I guess I'll, I'll jump to something really quick that Aaron said, I heard him before he left. Um, this, this might seem out of left field, but I promise I'll bring it back. So one of the things that Aaron said was about internships and, you know, how they're, they're kind of hard to get. You kind of have to work with what you've got and sometimes it helps you find out what you do and do not like. When I was in college, I, I didn't do an internship. I did research with a professor and I learned that I didn't like research. <laughs> so <laughs> kind, of the, kind of that lab work, the CRISPR stuff, not, it, it was, it's not, it's not my strong suit, I'll say. So I, I'm sorry, I don't have a good, a good response to that. Um, yeah, the kind of the, the pharma stuff, I'm, I'm not as well versed in. Sure, sure. No problem. Um, that's fine. Um, but maybe, you, uh, so you, do you, did you ever do an internship as an undergrad? You did? Yeah. No, no, I didn't. Oh, um, you did? I did. Yeah, I did. I did research with, um, with a professor on campus that became my senior design project. And even though that project has nothing to do with what I'm doing now, um, when I interviewed for this job, I talked about my senior design project and, you know, being able to describe it and like the science behind it and like what I actually did on it. Like I used that senior design project as a vehicle to show my skills and like how I can be successful in like this, this work environment. Um, and that, you know, that's, it's one good thing that came out of it. So, so did you get this job then right out of college? Is that so I took, yeah, so I took a little bit of time off after school. So I, you know, I did the five-year program. Um, and after that, I was kind of like, I was tired. I was a little beat. And I, you know, I went back home for, for a couple months and I was just kind of like laying low, slowly kind of applying to jobs. And then I actually heard through this job through a friend of a friend. So, you know, it's one of those things where Aaron was also saying it's a lot about like networking and who you know yes. and all that stuff. And, you know, this friend who talked to me, they're like, hey, are you still looking for a job? And I was like, yeah, actually I am. And, you know, the connection was made. I had an interview and then I started like the week after it, it moved really quickly. Um, yeah. So it was, it was a very fast process. Um, so, yeah. Wow. You really can't deny the power of the network. How did you create your network? Um, and maybe some suggestions on how these students could do the same. Absolutely. So when you're in college and I'll say this specifically for medical devices, it's a really small world. You never know when you're going to cross paths with people. Um, this job actually got through um, one of the other uh, women who worked at my at my lab when I was doing my senior design project. And you know, we knew each other. She knew how I worked. You know, we got along. Like we had a good working relationship. So you know, she you know had a um, a positive impression of me. So you know, when she heard about this job, I was like, hey, I think you could be a good fit. Um, you know, when you're building your 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 network. Um, I think it's really important, like, look to your other classmates, because you don't know where your paths are going to be in two, five, 10 years, and you never know when you can help somebody else out, and you don't know when one of them can help you out. Um, it's, you know, when you're thinking about building your, your network, it's not so much about, like, oh, being, you know, best friends with, like, the CEO of this company or whatever. It's, it's honestly, it's, like, it's the people right there with you, because, you know, there's so many of you, and you probably don't realize how many connections you have. And it's, you know, it's about maintaining, you know, good relations with, with those people, because truly it's a, it's a small world and you really do not know when your paths are going to cross. Yeah. Great advice. You know, I was sitting here, I was kind of thinking, so are you able to go to work um, in our current environment? Like, are it, yeah. you, it seems like your job would need you to be at work. It's not something you could do at home. Is that true? Yeah. Yep. So when, when the whole pandemic started, we kind of did this like hybrid where we like split the office and like people were allowed to come in every so often. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, by, by the summer, a lot of us have to be on site. So I actually, I do come into work every day um, and working from home, you know, for me, it, it, it wouldn't be easy. There's a lot, a lot of what I do, I need to be on site. If I'm, you know, working on, on a build, I, you know, I want to be there, like making sure that everything's going fine. If we're like, developing something like I have to be there to be like working with the materials. How are we processing this? Like, you know, how are we, you know, what materials are we using? Does, does it all work together? Um, you know, a lot of the times with these devices, I'm also the person writing, how do you make this device? I have to know how it works. 
you know, I have to be there. I have to get my hands on it. You know, how does this piece fit with this? Does this piece fit with this? Is the is this the correct match? All those things. So a lot of my job, I, I do have to be on site. It's it working from home would not not be too easy for me. No. And do you do a lot of testing of the things you develop too? Yeah, Maybe you could talk absolutely. a little bit about the testing process. I think that would be right. interesting. Yeah. So when you're, you know, developing a, a device, there's, yeah, there's, there's plenty of testing that goes on. So I'll just, um, I mean, more than testing, I think I'll just do a quick overview as to what the product development cycle for a medical device looks like. Um, so, you know, we'll start with a brainstorm. You maybe make a prototype or two of a couple different ideas. You test them to see if you like how they work. Once you have, you know, you've selected your, your best idea, you'll build a couple more prototypes and, you know, you'll test it. You'll test like, is this functioning the way I wanted to test? Um, is it doing what I wanted to test? Are we, you know, within the restraints of our device? Um, and you also um, have to, you know, uh, how do I say this? You also have to be able to test how you're testing. Like you have to make sure that the test that you're executing is accurate and that it's going to properly test what you want it to test. You know, you don't you don't want to get a you know a false positive and say like, oh, we passed. And it's like, well, no, you, your test was faulty. Um, Sooner you go through the cycle of testing, and you know, once you've decided like, okay, this we like our test method, it works, and we like how our device is being tested. You know, you go through this whole it's it's called DB testing, design verification, and validation testing. But you'll build um, you know a large sample of your device, and this the sample um, by sample I mean large like a quantity. Um, you look at the rest, the risks in your design, and based off of those risks, you you have to make choices. You know what the sample size you need to test, and then your once you have your sample size, you've built all your samples. You do your DV testing, and that's usually kind of your your really lengthy process um, that includes you know the mechanical testing. If it's going to be an implant, you have to do biocompatibility testing. So you know there would be um, oh man. You know, they might have to do an implant um, on, on an animal. It's usually like rabbits, you know, just a whole a whole scope of testing. And, you know, once all that testing is complete, um, you're, you submit to like the FDA or to whatever body you're kind of um, testing under. Um, but yeah, there's there's a there's a ton of testing. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about one of my, you know, I'm actually doing some tensile testing later today after this call, after lunch, I'll, I'm going to go jump and do some more tensile testing. Um, yeah, no, there, there's a ton of testing. Um, there's some people who like that's that's their whole job. They just they just design and tests and they you know execute tests and they design and and all that stuff. But yeah, a ton of testing. Yeah, as in the class we talked about the engineering functions and there are test engineers, there are design engineers, there are manufacturing yep. engineers, and you know at one job can run the gamut of all those. But then there can be jobs that just do that. Um, mm -hmm. And it sounds like you get to be involved in a lot of those different uh, aspects. Yeah. Yeah, and so part of that is, um, Aaron, it's funny, Aaron was also talking about this a little bit, but so when I started working here, I was actually the fourth employee, so it was a really small company. Um, since then, it's it's grown a lot. We actually got bought out by this giant um, or much bigger company called Viant Medical, um, and so since then, like, we, we've grown a ton, but having started at such a small company, I, you know, had the opportunity to wear a lot of hats, like Aaron was saying, you know, I was the R&D engineer, I was the, the technician, I was the project manager, I was the manufacturing engineer, I was the test engineer. I got to like, you know, wear all of these hats. Um, so that's, you know, that's that's been a, a really good experience being able to kind of test out all of these different areas. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of times in a, in a bigger company and even now that, you know, this company has grown, we're, you know, kind of being a little bit more, um, uh, how do I say this? You know, we're, we're, we're not wearing as many hats. We still wear plenty of hats, but not as many. Um, but yeah, no, absolutely. There are definitely like professions that can be dedicated to, you know, one specific and um, part of the process. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of fun to wear a lot of hats, but then it's also really fun to do what you're really good at too. So it can be, um, a, a, you know, a boon either way. Yeah. Well, um, We've taken a lot of your time. Is there any other questions that anyone in the class has that they would like to ask Sid Lalik? I, I guess not. Um, well, thank you so much. It was really great to meet you. And um, we'll, uh, I'll talk to you again soon.
Absolutely. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you.